What's going on guys and welcome to another video. My name is Milmas and in today's video, we're gonna be getting my Civic up and running with the help of tuning by Nick. So if you guys saw in the last video, I was able to install a upgraded intake manifold and throttle body on my ninth gen Civic. Now, in addition to that, it needed a couple other supporting modifications like fuel injector adapters and a couple other things. If you guys wanna find the full link to that video, you can find that in the top corner right now. In addition to that, we have to get this thing up and running. So because we now have a larger intake, throttle body, and different manifold, this will all run differently. So we have a sensor found on the intake right here, the mass airflow sensor, and this is expecting a certain amount of air to pass by it. Now, given that it knows the diameter of the pipe, it is basically just calculating based on the speed and temperature, how much air is going by it. Now, because all of that is now different, the engine is going to be getting more air and the ECU can actually feed the engine of the proper amount of fuel and air mixed in with the proper ignition so it can't run properly. So that's why you need a ProTune. Now, that is what I'm going to be getting done in this video. My Civic right now kind of runs, doesn't work that well. I have a Honda base map uploaded on the car just so that I can kind of, you know, move it around the garage and everything, but I wouldn't drive on it. I wouldn't recommend you guys to drive on the same kind of thing. And that's why I'm getting Nick to take care of this situation. So I have three different options. Option one is getting the car towed to Nick. Now, Nick lives about two hours away from me in Toronto, and that isn't the most cost effective or, you know, the most logical thing to do, given that it's going to cost me probably about 200 bucks to get it towed to him, let alone actually paying him to get the tuning done. So it would work. I don't think that's the best option for me. Option two is getting Nick to fully e-tune the car. That means that Nick will get access to my ECU via my computer and a Wi-Fi connection, and he'll do his thing over the internet. Now, I'll have to do a couple data logs and send him information, and he'll send it back to me with a revised tune. We'll do that a couple times, send it back and forth, and get the car running properly that way. However, that will never be as good as a professional dyno tune. And for that reason, I'm going with option three. Now, that entails a combination of the two. So I'll be A, getting him to do option two by semi e-tuning the car. So instead of let's say doing 10 of these data logs and revised tunes sent back and forth, I'm gonna probably do, you know, three, four, not too many of them, do like a little pull here and there, send the information back to him, he'll give me a revised tune just so that the car is drivable so that I can bring it to him. Now that does not mean that I can, you know, rev the car out, I won't be able to engage VTEC, I won't be running the best because he's only basing the tune off of the little bit of information that I'm giving him. But after I have the car semi e-tuned, I'll then get the car, bring it to Nick's shop, get him to properly dyno the car, strap it on there and make all the power, all the VTEC and all the great noises that this RBC setup will give me. It's going to be sick. Now, if you guys aren't fortunate enough to be close to Nick and you don't have access to him, what you can do to get the best bang for buck is you can spend a little bit of money to get uh, a couple hours worth of e-tuning or a dyno or whatever at a local shop of yours that has a dyno, strap your car on there and Nick can e-tune from there. So it's basically the best of both worlds where let's say you're halfway across the world, you can still get Nick to tune your car. Now, the more intricate and the more complicated your build is, the more complicated and the more time consuming the e-tuning is going to be. So it kind of goes hand in hand. I have a full bolt on ninth gen. It's not that crazy of a build right now, but when I swap my other engine into it, that's gonna require a little bit more time to tune. So keep in mind, the price for something like that might be a little bit more. That's just something that you guys can note right now. But anyways, let me go over the process. So talking with Nick, he told me to download the online software AnyDesk so I can have him remotely take control of my laptop with the use of a Wi-Fi connection. Following that, once you open the Honda software, Nick will transfer over a base map for your car that has been tailored specifically to your upgrades. Once transferred, he'll most likely change the display so that once you turn the car on and have it idling, Nick will be able to see the important engine vitals that he'll need to calibrate. So as he flashes your car with the new tune, he'll tell you to do a couple things like key on, engine off, cycle the ignition, and a bunch of easy small tasks that even someone who isn't knowledgeable with cars can figure out. With the tune now on your ECU, Nick will tell you to turn the engine on and he'll then monitor and adjust the fuel and ignition for everything non-VTEC, which is under 5,000 RPMs. Once he has the non-VTEC tuned, he'll then take care of everything else at the dyno. So again, this is just to be able to get me to drive around town. This is not a final tune. Nick wants me to record some data logs of the vehicle under various normal driving conditions so that he can pair the tune to the engine. 
He gave me some things to do during my logging so that he can better tune the car and make the process faster. That is, I will use second gear, usually use first gear and then second gear and third gear and whatnot to try to stay, do you like the, the crosshairs, like the red? Yep. Like that's where, that's the solid it's sitting from. So I try to hit, try to get it this column all in one shot with one gear by modulating the throttle. Okay. And then that's usually like the second gear and then I'll use the next gear, third gear or whatnot and try to get like this column and try to get as smooth as possible going up the RPM range. Okay. Staying as close as possible. And then you, you can do maybe the second, this one in third gear or fourth gear. That way I can get like a nice reading and yep. I can, that way allows me to then take care of these. Those cells. The column. Yep. Make it nice and smooth. If we can avoid going back and forth countless times and slowly progressing with the tune, that would be ideal. Okay guys, so you heard the man. So the car is pretty much ready to go for our first set of data logs. This is e-tuning. Um, what I have to do is pretty much drive it somewhat conservatively so that I stay in that one column as Nick showed you or as he mentioned in the video. Drive a little bit, go through gear two, three, four, maybe five, keep the full data log and everything under 10 minutes because otherwise you're pretty much sending him way too much information. Um, you're kind of wasting your time and his, so try to keep it to a minimum. Um, short from that, once I have this dialogue done, I'm gonna send it to him, he's gonna send me a revised version, and we're gonna pretty much go back and forth until the data log and engine, are, are, you know, it all looks good. So after sending Nick those logs and receiving new ones, Nick gave me the okay to bring it by his shop. We scheduled a time that worked for both of us and I made the trek out to his shop in Woodbridge. Now I have the Honda iPhone app which allows me to view a lot more parameters other than just the engine RPM and the speed that you would see on your regular tack. And for that reason, I have it on all the time when I'm driving my Civic. Now the drive up was pretty uneventful. A solid two hours of in the car, a bunch of rain, not too much traffic, but it was all worth it when I got there. So Nick brought my car onto his Dino Jet Dino. And I was happy to hear that he wanted to show me his Porsche as well. If you guys are familiar with Nick and his YouTube channel, he just finished building a big turbo K-Swap Porsche 911, and he's using the exact same engine that I have in my Civic as the power plant. It's so sick. I'll see if I can get a ride along with him in the near future because this thing is unreal. This also gave me extra reassurance knowing that Nick is very familiar with this engine. As for my car, when Nick wanted to fire it up again after raising it to the same level as the rollers, it wouldn't start. It turns out the battery terminal clamp stretched a bit and it didn't give the car the proper power it needed to turn the engine over. Now Nick was clever enough that he put a screw in between the clamp and it became tight enough to give the starter enough power. It's kind of a jank fix, but it does the trick. It fired right up. It could then be moved onto the rollers where we strapped it down and then we were ready to make some good numbers. All right guys, so the Civic is now here at Tuning by Nick's shop and we're here to get the car fully dyno tuned. So, we have Nick. Hey guys. We're here today and we're gonna get this thing uh, running proper. So yes. with Nick and myself, we have done a couple tunes sent back and forth and we started off doing an E-tune. Yep. And Nick is gonna work his magic to get this thing up and running perfectly. Yeah, basically we started like I would normally start most customers. We would, I would log in remotely, set everything up. And then from that point, you would either come to the dyno and we would finish the tune here. Or if you were not local, we could finish the tune all by email and, and do basically an E-tune. Car strapped down, I think it's ready to go. Yep. Why don't we get started? Go. These ninth gens are advertised to make 205 horsepower at the crank, and I'm assuming about 14% drivetrain loss on a dyno jet, and that's about 176 horsepower to the wheels. Given that my Civic can inhale and exhale more, let's see what that translates to power wise. So after doing a couple bass lines on the dyno, Nick went over with me how he tunes cars. Using the load control to hold the dyno, or to hold the engine, I was at 2500 RPM. I was holding them at these load columns yep. and adjusting the tune to try to hit a target. And I, and I always try to shoot for negative two so that the O2 sensor is always working and I, and I try to shoot for negative two short term trim. Because that like, just it's a nice spot for it to be. Whenever you land at the cell, it ends up being a little bit rich and the O2 sensor can like pull that back. You don't, but you don't want it to be too lean because then it has to add. So it's always better to be in the position of, of taking away a little bit extra fuel than having to add a bit of extra fuel. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with too much of the actual technical stuff. 
Nick is gonna go over all that and he's gonna make sure that the car is running right. He's gonna blend all the fuel tables and everything and get the car running good. Now the main reason why Nick is able to make some of those passes where he's able to put load on the car and you know take it off or change what the dyno, what the rollers are gonna be rolling at, he controls all that because of this little add-on box that he has on his dyno jet. Now it is an extra option that most guys do not get. He's got it. So like that allows me to turn on the load control. These arrows allow me to adjust what RPM range we're, I'm, I'm gonna work on and what, what, what RPM range the dyno is gonna hold the engine at. So I can zero in on those load columns and tune those load columns while the dyno's holding it. I can use the dyno to hold the engine at these load columns so I can tune them on the fly. So the more he progresses with the tune, the more he'll be able to rev it out. Now you can see he's about halfway done now, and you can see that the fuel table is getting sorted one box at a time. I'll play this clip again for you so you can see how the ECU is grabbing the numbers in between each cell. It's pretty cool to see. You can hear the distinct growl from my new RBC manifold as Nick progresses with the tune. You can see that he's revving the car out only to what RPM he's tuning, and you can see he's making 162 wheel horsepower at 5500 RPMs. I'm done tuning non VTEC, so I'm going to turn VTEC on. And one of the things that I do to like make life easier while I'm tuning it is I take advantage of the uh, live tuning tables. So because I'm going to switch over from tuning non VTEC to the VTEC, I have to switch over what the, the maps that I can actually tune on the fly. So before I had the low cam angle, I'm going to switch it to the high cam angle. And low fuel, I'm going to switch to the high fuel and low ignition, I'm gonna switch to high ignition because you can only fit so much in the, in the live memory. It would be great if I could select everything, but you can't because if I go and try to turn on the low and the high at the same time, it overfills the memory. So you get memory full error. So you have to pick and choose what you want, what makes the most sense to tune in live. This is the amount of memory you're working with and depending on how big the table is, some things are small, some things are big, but the fuel and ignition tables are really big. Even the cam tables are pretty big. Uh, you can't have both selected at the same time without overfilling the memory. So you have to pick and choose what you want to tune. So I'm, t I'm done with the low cam tables. I'm gonna switch to the high cam tables now. And that's why I'm switching over what I've selected for live tuning. What are they? What did I say? What are they? They're dumb ECUs. <laughs> With VTEC now engaged and Nick tuning the car for higher RPMs, you can see that we can now begin to rev it out and make the power band climb. This is being revved out to 7,400 RPMs and you can see that it hasn't even plateaued yet. Now at this point, Nick is playing around with the VTC actuator to give the engine the most amount of torque throughout the entire power band. Now it's basically how much the intake camshaft phases from the camshaft and exhaust sprocket. It's kind of technical, but it pretty much just allows you to get more power. During a pull, you'll want the most amount of horsepower and torque possible to be faster than other cars. And you can maximize your engine's power by adjusting that during wide open throttle pulls. You can also optimize daily driving when you have an awesome dyno like this with this load cell. It's pretty sick. The nice thing about the entire intake setup is that because I cut the RBC manifold and I used a thermal gasket, the heat from the engine doesn't transfer to the manifold, which helps prevent the intake air temp from rising after aggressive driving. To see how I did that, click the link here in the top right corner. So after doing a pull, after pull, after pull, after pull, the tune was completed and we went over the final results. At this point in the tune, I had fully tuned fuel and ignition using my starting point or my base map VTC cam gear angles. And from here, I started testing the different VTC angles to see what would yield more power. So red was 30 degrees VTC in VTEC and it was pretty good. Blue is 35 degrees VTC in VTEC and it made a little bit more power in the mid range, but actually started to lose a bit near red line. And then green is 25 degrees VTC, which lost a lot in this mid range, but started to make more up top. The final pull was the blue pull and it made all the mid range power and also made a bit more peak power, basically more power everywhere. 
we ended up running 30 degrees VTC down low in non-VTEC. When VTEC engaged, it was 35 to about 6,000, and then it tapered down to about 25 by red line. All said and done, stock to tuned, we have a comparison of 213 wheel horsepower to 184. And the interesting thing is the stock intake manifold actually performs slightly better right in this range, but nowhere else in the tune is it as, as good as this one spot. So Nick and I can pretty much both agree that if you guys have a ninth gen and you guys want to modify it, you should save all your money up, buy all these parts, and install them all in one shot. It doesn't really make sense to install one part at a time, get Nick to tune it, install another part, get him to tune it again, because it's not really cost effective, especially if you know that you're gonna be doing more mods in the future. So if you wanna go full bolt on, take a look at my channel, take a look at all the videos that I've showed you guys on how to get your car in this state, and then once it's ready, send Nick a message, either on Instagram or shoot him a message via email. Nick will help you out with getting your car running properly. All right guys, so I've got the tune now on the car. The car is driving good. I've been driving it for the last little bit and I gotta say, it sounds so damn good. The RBC upgrade on this thing has completely transformed A, how it drives, but also the sound. It's killer. There's no other way of putting it. So how does it drive? Well, on the street, it's good. I wanna see if I can do a little bit of a pull here. This is an 80 road. I shouldn't have any problem getting up to highway speed. So what I have noticed is that down low, as we saw in the torque curve, we did lose a little bit of power. However, in the top end, it is sick. And it just keeps pulling. And keeps pulling. So it may have gone a little bit over 80 there, maybe 81. That might be pushing it, but guys, this is sick. The nice thing about this is that because we now have so much more extra RPM, because we bumped it up a little bit, I can stay in the power band more when you shift up. So let's say you're in first gear, you shift up into second, you're now gonna be higher up in the next gear, which means you're making more power there too. Guys, I've got no complaints with this. No knocks, 94 octane, on E85 with let's say better fuel injectors, this will be a killer setup and you'll make even more power. I can't wait to take this thing to the racetrack and see how this actually does. Anyways guys, if you guys wanna hit up Nick, you guys can find his contact info in the description box along with his YouTube channel if you guys wanna see more cool content about his Porsche. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm really looking forward to the next video. I hope you guys are too. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I get it. I get turbo. <laughs> There's no comparison. Yeah, no kidding.